morning, everyone. Well, first of all, I wanted to say a quick thank you to uh, Stephanie and to Judy, and also Tori ended up helping us at the early service as well. So, and just to draw to your attention, we are an all-girl crew today without Pastor Tim. <laughs> <laughs> so, yay. So I have a funny story to tell you regarding that. So there were these three uh, Christian men, and they were hiking in the woods, and they came across this large, roaring river that they had to get across, and they didn't know how to cross it. So the first one prayed to the Lord, and he said, Lord, give me strength to cross the river. And poof, he turned into this big, muscly arms and big legs, kind of looked like Pastor Frank did on Sunday night in that picture with him, <laughs> the muscles. So he swam across the river, and he almost drowned a couple of times, but it took him about two hours, but he made it. So the other two are watching this, and the second guy says, well, I'm going to pray for strength, but I'm also going to pray for equipment. And poof, there's a rowboat there for him. So he rose across the river with his strong arms, but it took him about an hour, and he nearly capsized about three times. So the last guy's watching this. He says, well, I'm going to pray for strength, for equipment, and intelligence. And poof, he turned into a woman. She walked down the river 200 yards and across the bridge. <laughs> so, so girl power's okay sometimes. So. <laughs> All right. So the title of my sermon today is Love, Praise, and Worship. So over the past few weeks since uh, Pastor Tim told me that I had to speak today, I've been praying and asking the Lord to show me what he wanted me to talk to you about. And uh, he's been showing me in my devotionals and scripture readings and through that little quiet voice that comes <coughs> to all of us. And it started to form a pattern over a period of time. And he, he was saying to me that we need to love the Lord wholeheartedly and we need to be praising him and worshipping him and how that can transform our lives and that we as Christians must remember to do this. But I'd like to start off with a prayer, so if you'd all pray with me. Lord, thank you for my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and their love. Thank you that your Holy Spirit is here with us. Open our hearts, Lord, that we may receive your message today. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I wanted to start by asking you all a question. Why do we come to church? I want you to think about that just for a minute. Why do we come to church? Many of us come to church because maybe we want to come and see our friends or our brothers and sisters in the Lord, or maybe we come because it's out of habit or tradition. Uh, some of us come because we want to love and praise the Lord. There's so many different reasons why we all come to church. But the, we need to remember that the Lord wants us to come to praise and worship him. He wants us to come to be amongst our brothers and sisters in the Lord and to empower and inspire one another with the Holy Spirit. God wants us to love and worship him. Love, praise, worship. So how do we do that? Well, first we have to obey God's laws and the greatest commandment of all is you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. We need to love God with our whole hearts. He wants all of you. Paul tells us in Romans uh, 12, and actually you have scripture notes in your bulletin, so... If you do want to follow along, you'll see they're all in order of how I'll be speaking them. So, so in uh, Romans 12, Paul tells us, he says, Give your bodies to God because all, of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's purpose for you, which is pleasing and perfect. Don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection 
and take delight in honouring each other. So you can see that a love relationship with God starts with our heart. A man looks at the outward appearance, but God, he can see our heart deep inside of us. And talking about the heart, I have a little aside here. Did you know that the human heart beats 100,000 times a day and that it beats over 2.5 billion times in the average lifetime? Pretty cool, huh? So it's such a small part of our body, but it's our life force. You know, just like the Holy Spirit is the life force of God, we can't function correctly as Christians without that. So now if our hearts are filled with love for God and this love is overflowing into joy within us and the Holy Spirit flows from this joy, it empowers us and enables us to love God and praise God the way he, that he wants to be praised. C.S. Lewis wrote that all enjoyment spontaneously overflows into praise. We read in Psalm 113, Praise the Lord. Yes, give praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever, everywhere from east to west. Praise the name of the Lord. The world is full of beauty everywhere we look. And the Lord's always showing us new things, new creations, new moments. Like Pastor Frank said last week, the Lord is always trying to seduce us. When we're walking on the beach and we're admiring a beautiful sunset, or we might be out hiking and spy some beautiful wildflowers or a beautiful deer. And God wants us to praise him for those moments and appreciate those moments. For example, on Good Friday, I was parked out in front here under the big tree there, and I was just about to leave, and uh, a blue jay came and landed like about three feet from me. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. I'm going to wait a minute. Well, then a red-headed woodpecker came down and joined him. So I'm really enjoying this. Well, then another red-headed woodpecker came and another blue jay. So I was just like, this is wonderful, you know. So to me, because I love birds, that was a real blessing. So I praised God for that. And I'm sure you've all had similar moments and felt that same, that same uh, inspiration from that. God wants us to share everything with him, to praise him for all the wonderful moments in our lives. We need to love, praise, and worship him. So you're probably all thinking to yourselves, well, I sing to the Lord on Sundays at church and I give thanks to God when I'm praying. So then ask yourselves, is it coming from the bottom of my heart? Is it pleasing to God? For me, praise comes from loving God with my whole heart, from over th overflowing thankfulness and joy, and it comes from a place that's deep within my soul. One of the scriptures that spoke to me while I was writing the sermon was written by Paul again in Ephesians he says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father. And the key parts of that I've got underlined in your scripture notes is being filled with the Holy Spirit singing the psalms and the hymns and the spiritual songs among ourselves and making music to the Lord in your heart. In Psalm 34 we read, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. Sometimes we have a tendency to read this in the Bible and we think that it doesn't apply to us today. We think that was maybe that applied to the early church and that things are different now. It's not. God hasn't changed. He still wants us to praise and worship him. Love, praise, worship. So if you're not already spending time praising the Lord, I invite you to give that a try you'll find that when you relax and start to enjoy it and mean it, the Holy Spirit will work through you and you'll be praising God exactly how he wants to be praised because the Holy Spirit does it for us if we let him. 
as Judy read to you earlier from Romans. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. I find this to be true when I spend time with the Lord in the morning after I've you know, done my devotional and said prayers and everything. I like to spend some time to just praise the Lord and tell him how much I love him. And it usually ends up with me singing. <clears throat> and for those of you who have sat next to me, you'll know I'm not a very good singer. <laughs> so I feel kind of bad that the Lord has to listen to me. But here's the incredible thing. The incredible thing is that the Lord turns that out-of-tune singing into beautiful praise to him. After a little while, the Holy Spirit takes over, and it really happens. It does. And the other amazing thing is that not only are you pleasing God, the Holy Spirit is ministering to you. So you've got the Holy Spirit and love and joy going out to God, and he's pouring it right back at you. And anything that you're feeling, if you have anything that's going on in your life, if you've got any worries or anything at all, you just get washed clean with the Holy Spirit and you feel revitalized. And it's just a wonderful feeling. It keeps you in such a great frame of mind and spirit. Through Jesus, we have this extraordinary gift of the Holy Spirit and it allows us direct communication with our Father. It's a gift that the people in the Old Testament didn't have. So we need to make sure that we... We, we make the fullest potential of this gift that we have. And I'm speaking about the gift of the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit can intercede through us and pray on our behalf and praise God on our behalf because the Holy Spirit knows better than we do. You know, this really helps me in my life that I handle my daily stresses by being able to draw on the strength of God's love and joy through praise and it's almost instantaneously the difference that you feel. So my dream is that our whole church would feel the same amazing joy that overflows into praise and worship so that we'd all be sharing this, all of us, as the body of Christ, this wonderful joy and praise. As once again Paul <laughs> writes in Ephesians, Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. So to sum up, God wants us to love him with our whole hearts. He wants us to love him so much that that love overflows into joy. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, this joy turns into praise for him. And God wants us to worship him in spirit and in truth. Love, praise, worship. So let us all try to praise and worship God more in our private prayer time. And then when we bring all that overflowing love to our services and praise for God, everyone will feel it. People who have not found the Lord will be touched by the Holy Spirit. Our guests will be touched. We will all know that God is truly here with us. So I'm going to do what Pastor Tim does, and I'm going to give you all a little homework to do. <laughs> so what I want to ask you to do, if you're not already doing this, which I know, you know, maybe you are, in your prayer time this week, try to set aside some time to praise your Lord. You could start by singing him your favorite a praise song. You could start by just telling him over and over how much you love him. Hosanna. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Don't let your pride get in the way. Just be humble and worship and adore the God that you truly love. Love, praise, worship. Will you give that a try? Yes? Very good. Let us all give thanks and praise to the Lord right now. Amen? Amen. Amen.
So I'd like to close with a prayer, if you'd join me. Lord, dear Lord, help us not to conform to the standards of those around us. Rather, help us to honour you with our whole being, to love you with our whole hearts, with all our soul and with all our strength. Help us to make this the number one priority in our life. May we be a community of love, loving you, loving each other and loving our neighbours. Lord, thank you so much for the blessing of your presence and thank you that your presence satisfies the spiritual hunger in our hearts. Lord, we pray that you will turn our nation around. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Revive your church. Transform your people. May your kingdom come. Thank you, Lord. And we ask all of these things in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So if you'll please stand for our...